Okay. But yeah, oh yeah, to your point, now you see how important this is getting, that we, uh, that we communicate with our tape manufacturers and the, that the tape manufacturers and the cylinder manufacturers and everybody gets on board. And um, as a matter of fact, let me, let me do something real quick. Let me, I, let me quickly toss out what I think are key variables that we need to uh, address uh, in this industry, okay? <laughs> as they relate to this whole thing about what is the actual print diameter and all this distortion and all this stuff, particularly since we have servo presses, all right? This is the plate cylinder, all right? So one, the bare cylinder diameter of the, of the plate cylinder is one variable that we need to be fully aware of as we're analyzing this whole situation. Number two, the tape that goes on there. So the mounting tape. On the mounting tape is the plate. Three, plate, right? All right. So we've got, we've got those variables there messing around with the print diameter, okay? All right. So, well, in there, another variable that actually gets calculated from variables is for the distortion. Okay? With these variables, we can calculate what the distortion should be. Well, another variable, let's put before the distortion, let's put the backing, the plate backing. So, we'll put plate backing and for plate Overall, somebody's making that plate backing. There are tolerances associated with it. And in fact, even if you look in, uh, in uh, flexible principles and practices, you'll see that the, the K-factor chart has K-factors for 4,000, 7,000, 5,000, all this stuff. So there's variability there, right? So that's another variable. The plate backing, plate overall, and then because we have that, then we have the distortion. I see, is that coming into the video? Yeah, okay. Besides the distortion, then we have this, okay? The impression cylinder. Now, uh, you know, the first time I ever heard this concept, that there may be different diameters in impression cylinders in a given press, is uh, when I started messing around with narrow web presses. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but it, and, and that's something you guys can t can throw up here on the bulletin board. But uh, I think I heard that impression cylinders like uh, Mark Andy Press, uh, twenty two hundred or something like that. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, increase or decrease in diameter as you go from one station to another. And I'll check that out. If that's true, that's amazing. But the diameter of that impression, impression cylinder diameter, is something we need to know when we're contemplating this whole thing. If we're going to try to dial in everything precisely, right? What else? We also need to know that substrate that's going through there. Substrate, okay? I think that when we talk about distortion, <clears throat> and we talk about precise repeat length, and we talk about avoiding slur in the direction of the, of the web, and all of these things. We need to have a, an algorithm, an algorithm, a table, a calculator, where we put in precisely, to as an accurate uh, uh, precision we can, these variables, at least, if I haven't missed any, and come up with distortion, okay? And as a matter of fact, maybe come up with tape thickness based on other things over here. So that's a study that we have to do, and this is what I'm talking about when I say I want to challenge the industry. I want some guys out there that are pretty smart to, per to try to figure this stuff out. And let's work together to try to figure this stuff out, okay, guys? Uh, and yeah, I welcome your input on this. Thanks.
All right, I, uh, I just took a look at the uh, video and there's something I, uh, very, very, very important that I left out and I don't want to leave out. And it's very important. And I think that having said hey, all that stuff I said about that, probably the m most sensible outcome would be for us to work to balance everything out so that our distortion can be what we usually think it, it has been, you know, exactly 15 inch uh, uh, based on things like a 15 inch repeat exactly or whatever, not factoring in those discrepancies because, you know, if we start to mess around with distortion and vary it and introduce all of that into our workflow, uh, that's a situation that can be achieved and accomplished, but it would require such precise control of the flow as jobs are repeated and as things happen, you know, it can be done. Uh, again, it's a matter of awareness of everything, but probably until things, uh, until there's a very compelling reason to change, probably the best thing is to make everything balance including the tape thickness and stuff like that, so we can go back to just having the ideal diameter and end up with the ideal printing diameter. Okay, guys? All right.